Hey everybody, this is Andrew Bensley, co-host of Community Notice Board podcast and a former guest at the uh, the Andy Social podcast. Uh, just telling you guys to come check mine out at the Community Notice Board. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I can't do it. There's not a gun to his head right now, I promise you. It seems like there is. But um, yeah, listen guys, we do a great podcast called Community Notice Board. We've had some great guests on in the past, Becky Lucas, Luke Heggie, and that's what I reckon. And James, what's the pot about? It's about suburbs we grew up in. So we talk about uh, the guest's local history with the place, uh, must-see places that you have to visit, uh, coming-of-age tales, and the hometown heroes that we just can't forget. Yeah, so give it a listen all, on all podcast apps and all that sort of shit. Hell yeah. And yeah, thanks a lot. See ya. Hey, it's another episode of the Andy Social Podcast, and uh, this is what my voice sounds like when I'm pinching my nose. Come on over and join me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Andy Dowling is the best way to support this podcast. And support starts from only $1 a month. It's nothing. Set forget. You won't even bloody notice it. If you want access as well to the exclusive Patreon podcast episode or a bunch of free shit, then there are additional tiers there to go and check out as well. But go and check it all out over at patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. Hey, it's the Andy Social Podcast, episode 291 of Me Little Show. And my guest on this episode is comedian Nick Kappa. I just saw Nick's uh, latest show, Tuxedo Traveler. It's been doing uh, the rounds, and I saw it in Sydney. Very, very funny stuff. And Nick is about to hit the road and go to Dumbo and Tenterfield, of all places, doing the Three Kings of the Road comedic motorcycle tour. Bit of a mouthful there. Um, I'm going to have everything in the show notes over at andysocial.net and andydowling.net. You can go to nickkappa.com. You can search for Kappa Flapper on the socials. Nick came over to my place here in Piemont. He came to the Piemont Palace, met the Piemont Prince himself, Larry Burb. We had a chat. It was great. We talked about metal. We talked about comedy. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So enough crapping on from me. Please enjoy this great chat with Nick Kappa. I'm pumped to meet any celebrity. I think it's fucking sick. Yeah. However, like, I'm just as pumped to meet, like, a dude. Once I met a dude who was building drones in his shed, and I was like, yeah, sick. <laughs> I, I love you. It's, <laughs> it's, a, certain, it's, yeah, it's yeah. a certain type of person that would be doing something mm, like that mm, as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and racing them. I was yeah. just like, hell yeah, you know. <laughs> when it's when it's always like a weird thing, it, it's so good, man. And I think, I, I mean, with the internet, it's like yeah. given a platform for so many people. I mean, yeah. good, good and bad. I mean, there's some yeah. really fucking horrible yeah. shit out there. Yeah, but- yeah, yeah. If MRA is your hobby, then it's not very. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The internet's great for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, there's so many people who yeah. would normally, like, before the internet, would just be like a laughing stock mm-hmm. and wouldn't get to interact with anybody. But now they've got, like, this platform where they can build their own audience and people just love them. Like, um, oh, I don't have my phone on me, but yeah. um, uh, on my phone case is this guy, Frankie McDonald, who's, mm-hmm. like, he's uh, he's got, like, really, really, like, heavy autism. I don't know if that's the right term, yeah. heavy autism, but yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, um, it's full blown autism. It's full blown. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is like on the Richter scale. Right on the Richter scale. Um, but his whole claim to fame is that he just he's obsessed, sort of like Rain Man style, with weather reports. Oh. So he's obsessed with the weather, and so he does YouTube videos for like the past ten years, where he just screams at the camera, just yelling out, "Be prepared!" Blah blah blah. Like, and you know, <laughs> storms coming to Vancouver. Rah, rah. <laughs> And he got on like national TV in Canada and he's got like half a million followers and all this like, just crazy stuff. <laughs> and I love the guy. I reckon he's fantastic. Yeah, so yeah. every time he pops up in the feed and he does little shout out videos to everybody and says like, oh, you know, hello, yeah. Frank, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Just random out. Like, yeah, don't yeah. even know who the Frank is. Yeah, They're not yeah. even tagged. Yeah. They're just like, all right, no worries. But, um, you know, before the internet, he wouldn't have, he just would have been stuck in his room or whatever. Yeah, and- just yelling in his room. <laughs> Yeah, or just yelling at people wall. go past, you know. Yeah, out the window. Oh, there's that crazy Frankie guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would have been at the food court or something like oh, that, or, you know. And I'd, yeah. I'd love to get him on the podcast, but I think he's just, it'd be just too, like you were talking about like erratic sort of thinking and things like that. I think it'd just be too much to. Yeah, one to of those guys, you would you would have to just get him for two hours and edit it down to 10. <laughs> just edit it down to 10 minutes, you know. Well, I did that with, um, do you know um, do you know Top Dog, mm. Ian Griffiths? Okay, so this guy from Lithgow. And I'll I'll send you a link later. Oh. But he's um he's been on he's been on the net for the past ten years, and he's got all these like reoccurring stories, and and he's got like he's got a normal mm. Facebook profile, but he's got like twenty five thousand people following him. Oh on his man, profile. I think I have found this guy. Yeah, 
Yeah. And so he ended up doing a song with Forte like a few years ago, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, really. But he does all these rap videos and I he, like he found our band and started listening to our music. Yeah. And so like, okay, so I connected with him and once again, like just really sort of like erratic behavior, just mm -hmm. like just a stream of consciousness coming out every day. Like every five minutes, he's doing a new status update on Facebook. Just the whole mm. news feed is filled with him. And um, I hit him up one day because he said something like, oh, I want to be on your podcast. And I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck that. No way. Yeah. And after a while, I went, okay, let's give it a go. And I had to beforehand, like, write out as many questions on a piece of paper and just go, bam, 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 rapid fire. Yeah. I couldn't give him any space to, like, let him sort of think on his own because I knew yeah. that it would just... Yeah, yeah. It would just go to silence yeah. or just nothing would come out of him. Yeah. And it ended up being quite entertaining. It was quite good. And he was stoked. He was loving it. He goes, oh, it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah. And, and of course, like, I think now it is, like, the most listened to episode I've ever done. Like, over really? five and a half years, yeah. that guy just, just broke it. Top dog. Top dog. So good. Top dog. So I love that shit. I love – that's that's, like – you know, in this podcast and stuff, you discuss the attitudes of metal, yeah. And and people, people like like this is why I want to come on as well because I fucking I hear you talk about the theories behind it and what metal means to you. And I think metal is like, man, metal is like, uh, that's metal to me. Is not even starting a fan page on Facebook. You know what I mean? <laughs> just going from your profile, uploading videos, <laughs> just going out there. That's metal to me. You know what I mean? That's what metal's all about. It's never about being cool. No. It's no. about expressing yourself and also just being a fucking nice guy. <laughs> Anyone you meet in metal is so nice. I'm they yet are. to I mean, it's yeah. it's like the ultimate social outcast group yeah. because, you know, you're in school, the stereotypical high school, or whatever, and you've mm. got all the all the demographics of people and you've always got the outcasts. They're mm -mm. not the cool kids and they sit over in the corner. And metal's like just we don't care how sort of mentally handicapped you are or whatever come in because we just want as many people to like the same yeah, music. Yeah, and yeah. that's, and that's basically the baseline to begin with. As long as you like the same bands, you're cool. And so over the years, like, you know, when you're sort of going to metal shows and things like that, it is such a weird mix of people, like yeah. really like fucking weird, but, but everyone's super cool. Everyone's like nice because I think it's just that common sort of, yeah, we like, like the music and that's about it. I think it's because you get to fully express yourself as well. Yeah. And yeah. and there's a, there's like, um, you're just like, ah, just letting it all out. So you go, <laughs> look, I'm not angry for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? I'm fine now. <laughs> it's a good outlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, it's just like, it'll never be cool and that's what's great. Well, yeah, you know? the more... The more uncool it can be, the more mm. that people hate it, the better it is. Mm, mm, mm. And so this is the funny thing because as metal, I think in the last few years a lot of Australian bands have started to do really well. Yeah. And so more and more people are getting into it again. And yeah. you can see like the hardcore, like the really true guys, they're getting frustrated because suddenly it's becoming more popular. And so it's yeah. sort of like tarnishing their their precious little thing that everyone else hated, but it was theirs. Yeah. Now, now they're going to share it a bit more. And it's like, ah, oh, I'm like torn between, you know, the underground and, and uh, having this like thing that's against the grain and suddenly, you know, your average Joe suddenly rocks up who doesn't look like your stereotypical metalhead, but he loves heavy music. And then they're like, oh, but you're normally the person who I don't get along with. But now we both like Slayer. Shit. What do we do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But but it's really cool because um, I've kind of reached that attitude within, you know, my creative process and stuff. Yeah. And realizing that, like, yeah, I do comedy um, and I, I still like to write a good joke that everyone likes, you know. Yeah. But now I'm aiming towards what would I like? Because that's that's when I started. I started not wanting to get famous or anything. I I, I didn't want to get on TV or anything. I just wanted to do the weirdest shit I could <laughs> and make people laugh. You know, like that's what I wanted to do, right? But then after doing it for ten years or whatever, and you know, being broke for so long and all that kind of shit, you 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 creative. Um, objectives, you know, differ. And you've talked about this before with other guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I like, like all your guests and stuff because some of them just live for the metal, yeah. live for the creative process. And that's what well, that's what I'm coming around to do. I'm like, well, I never wanted to be on this TV show that I'm auditioning for anyway. Yeah. Like that didn't that never made me laugh. I wouldn't be watching it. I wouldn't even know about it if yeah, I didn't do yeah. Why don't I just concentrate on my own shit? You know, so it's, just it's kind of like amusing yourself. Like you've got to, you've got to be yeah. entertained by – 
like your own thing rather than sort of, oh, I mean, it's a very sort of metal word, but like conforming, you know, conforming yeah. to whatever the wider sort of audience or, yeah, I mean, I guess from a, from a comedian point of view, like that stereotypical thing that you're trying to aim for is, is either the big shows or to get onto TV or radio and things mm, like that. Mm, so mm. there'd be sort of the, the traditional sort of pathways you go down. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's the traditional pathways. And I'm like, well, if they get offered to me, I'm probably not going to say no. Yeah. However, fuck that. Like, why why try and get that? Yeah. Like, I never was into that. Yeah. I never listened to mainstream radio or anything, you know, like anything like that. That's That's – yeah, that's not what I'm into. You know, I'm I'm fucking into people that just live for the creative process. You know, that's that's what I love. You know, and I love guys that like, uh, yeah, hardcore metal bands. Yeah, and they're like, no, this is what this is close to me. This is this is something I don't want to change for this. Like, I'm not going to budge from my creative. And sometimes that turns out well for their career. Yeah, like, because yeah. people are like, well, they never budged, they never swayed. And they get more money than anyone else, more money than anyone that's conformed. Yeah, and then I think, I mean, I, I see it in, in metal and, yeah. and just music in general because you'll have, you'll have the bands that are very sort of, they've got a strategy in place, they've got the business plan. Yes. They know exactly what they want to, or what yeah. they need to do in order yeah. to get to that next level. And then you've, and, you know, some of them still crash and burn anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you've got the other bands who are just, they'll play at the local shithole yeah. for the next 20 years never go anywhere, never, like in some cases, never even release any music, like on a yeah, yeah, on yeah. vinyl or CD or anything like that. They just keep playing live and that's all they want. Yeah, that's all they want. And yeah. and, and they've got a, a cool little following. It's tiny, like, but they don't, they don't care. They don't give a fuck. It's like, so I kind of, I kind of admire that. I, I, I get both sides of it, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, in the end, if you're not, if you don't like what you do and you have to keep adjusting for other people, then I guess it's not sustainable, is it? Like eventually you're just going to burn out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also you've got comedians that that's what they're designed for. Yeah. That's what they do. They just do big shows. They want to get on TV. And I like the ones that are brazen about it. Just yeah. like, you can tell this, like Joel Creasy, he just wanted to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can just tell. He just wanted to be famous. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, he gets writers to write, help him write his jokes. He delivers them beautifully. He's got fucking charisma. That's what he wanted. And I love that. Yeah. I think that's also metal. It's just going, I don't give a fuck. I want to be famous. I want to be on the screen. You know, it's not metal, but it's got that attitude where you don't give a fuck about what other people think. Because he, how many people, like, how many people criticize you? Like, if you fail, like, that's why people say, I never want to be famous because, yeah. but they do want to be famous on the inside. But no one ever says it because they're like, what if I fail? I'll look like a real idiot. That's it. And I guess you'll, yeah. you know, it's that sort of, uh, sort of in denial where, you know, your, your, your underlying in intentions is to get famous and become mm. big, but yeah, you don't want to admit it either because you might fail or because you worry that people are going to think you're a wanker because of it. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, if you're just straight up saying, well, I don't give a fuck, hey, like I'm, I'm going, I'm selling out you know, at the first fucking yeah, instance yeah, yeah, and I'll yeah. do whatever it takes. And then I think it's that genuine sort of aspect to it that no matter what you do, whether, whether it's to your liking or not, as long as it's genuine, then that's, that's probably what makes it metal you know makes it that sort of rebellious sort of attitude yeah man yeah and i fucking but i'm also not metal in other ways like the moment someone offers me an ad or something i'm like i'm just because i'm from the country and i've worked <laughs> for fucking 800 bucks a week 12 <laughs> hours a day yeah. in the 45 degree hot sun if someone offers me a betting ad that's two thousand dollars a day of course i'm gonna take it like there's no way i'll <laughs> I will, you know, I'll suck the horse's dick on this betting ad. You know what I mean? Like for two grand a day, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like I've done all kinds of terrible, you know, betting things. I've done alcohol. If if there was cigarettes were still advertising, I would be, I'd be the fucking Marlboro Camel. I'd be, I'd be, I'd have the two humps sewn on me back. Just, I would take up smoking, you know? <laughs> Just like chain smoking, hang, all hanging out of your mouth. Yeah. Because that kind of funds your cool shit. You're like, oh, wow, I've got $2,000 now. Like, I used to blow the money, but now I'm like, okay, I've got $2,000. How can I make, like, this is money to spend creatively. All yeah. right, I'll buy an iPad. I'll draw. I'll fucking, I'll use it to make some videos, and I'll mm. pay a guy to edit it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what you got to do, you know? you, you, you got to like, reinvest it like. back in. Yeah, 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 because, yeah. like, that's why I was in it in the first place, to make cool shit, you yeah. know? Like... 
Yeah, it's really cool, man. I often think of like I love uh, also another reason why to just discuss these theories with you, man. Like I often think about metal albums where they, where people change, you know, like uh, Machine Head's "The Burning Red." Yeah. Uh, I remember I bought that CD, yeah. and you know he's rapping in it. Um, what's his name? Rob. Rob Flynn. Rob yeah. Flynn from yeah. um, Machine Head. He's and it's just such a different album from the uh, previous albums, and you think, wow, when did he make the decision to rap? When was that meeting happened? Because I can imagine him like sitting yeah. in a tour bus or something like that, and yeah. someone comes. I mean, I don't know if this is the mm. case, but I imagine like he's sitting on the bus and they're doing a tour, and someone like from a support band or whatever or a mate goes, "Oh, have you heard like the new fucking Limp Biscuit album? Yeah, that yeah. Fucks, that's fucking sick!" And it's like, "What's that?" And he goes, "Oh, they got some rapping." It's like, "Oh." okay, they're doing really well. Maybe we need to start rapping so we can sort of yeah. go to the next level. Because I think he did that for a, couple, a few years. We had a couple of albums there which were just fucking, I mean, in my opinion, dog shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially what they originally put out and sort of went to that. Um, but I think if he, I mean, I don't, I don't really pay attention to what Rob Flynn sort of says, but um, if he sort of turned around and said, yeah, fuck Earth. Like, I, I want to do it. I dig the music and I just want to do it that way. Then I'd be like, oh, yeah. respect, you know? But yeah. if he t- turned around and goes, well, I could see new metal was going really, you know, oh, I don't know. If he, if he, I guess if he tried yeah. to bullshit his way out. Yeah, it, exactly. Then that would be, that He's would like, yeah, I thing. wanted to rap, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really weird. And But the thing is, I remember being, I remember the riffs being really good. Mm. You know, the uh, the single off it was great. And um, yeah, and and it was so cool but i often think about that and the, the other the other day i was um i thought of the same thing i often that scene stayed in my head from um some kind of monster <laughs> yeah. i think i know you know what i'm going to yeah, say yeah. right where kirk hammett said they should put solos in the songs yeah and the way they bullshit him out of it is so crazy how they just kind of gaslight him in a way. They're like, he was, he it's was like, not demoed. your idea, our idea, whatever. And it, Kirk Hammett's easily the coolest dude in the band. Yeah, he's just so laid back and he's yeah. just—he's too nice for his own good because you can yeah. see, um, I haven't watched it in years, but you could sort of almost see the point. It was sort of like an episode of The Simpsons. Like you can see the point where his heart just breaks. And yeah, he sort of yeah. did, like reality kicks in and he's like, I've just been dogged. Yeah. I've just been dogged. I've been dogged. At, like the thing that I'm known for is to, is to provide leads yeah and there are none of them on this album like i've just been fucking shoved out of the out of the picture it's just absolutely crazy to me like that, <laughs> that like is, solos aren't cool yeah know? yeah yeah um but however at the time I, I remember watching the movie and i was still into guitar solos yeah and i remember i i was like I was like, I would love there to be guitar solos in yeah. this, but I could see how it would be a move, you know? Yeah, yeah. But then now I'm like, oh, what a stupid way to go. Like, to go back on everything you believe in, you know? Like, is... What a fucked album as well, because yeah. it's like... I mean, and that, that doco is like just the perfect explanation. If anyone yeah. sort of listens to San Ango and says, why the fuck did they go from like this to this? Mm. And then it's like, well, just watch the doco. And then it's like, oh, it makes sense because they're all fucking just off their heads had no idea like Lars just wanted to go mainstream like even more mainstream than what they were already were yeah. whatever was cool at the time and so he was the guy sort of hanging out with Limp Biscuit and all that kind of yeah, shit yeah yes then you got Hetfield coming out of a like alcoholism and he's, yeah. he's on the straight and narrow but you know like anybody who's like mm. really suffering you've just got to go extreme in the other direction which means just fucking everybody else has got to change for, for you as well and then everything else going on like bass player leaving and Bob Rock, like, wanting to join the band secretly, but then gets denied, and he sort of plays bass on the album, and then just the, the music is just so, like... Yeah. Fucked. It's it just, is. It's shit. It's such turmoil, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> and I love it, because they got uh, Jason Newstead's band Scatterbrain, and That's they right. go see it, and they all get jealous. They're like, Scatterbrain's a new thing. Yeah, and then he fucks off at the end yeah, of the gig. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, we'll hang around for Jason. It's like, oh, he's gone. It's like, oh. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he I think he left the band like yeah. a year later or something. Yeah. And then they just kept playing anyway or something. Oh. But like you're just like fucking hell, it's just Yeah, you I mean, yeah, obviously I would like comedy to be my number one job. However, I just did like eight shows in Melbourne. You know, to 70 people, like sold out yeah. basically. Most like seven of them were sold out, you know. Yeah. And it was just amazing. I was like, I could do this, you know, just 70 Easy. people doing my own thing. Yeah. But I suppose you want that bit bit bigger or whatever. But also you're just like, uh, it's weird because the laughter changes 
when you get more people, mm. you find you can get away with more. You find oh, that you have audience? more people there yeah. to be with you. So it makes you wonder, do when you've got an audience that big that just see you anyway, yeah. no matter what, no matter what, if Metallica rock up, there's going to be 3,000 people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just do whatever you want. Like, you can do... I mean, I know they want every album to be good, but you're like, do you want to become that way? Or would you like to be fucking, I don't know, like... Um, clutch yeah and just yeah. do 200 people or 500 people once a year and probably and just, have a little bit more integrity or a bit more yeah. care and thought put into their music because yeah yeah because i think yeah. i think on that even that san anger they some kind of monster doco mm. they were talking about like like their lack of inspiration or whatever and they're trying to get these songs out of their head or whatever mm. and i think one of them one of the engineers or one of the guys from the record label just said like you, like I don't know if he said it to them or he was talking later, but he said something like, "They're all fucking millionaires. They've all got fucking mansions and cars and everything. Where's the adversity? Like, you yeah. know, the stuff that they wrote like in the early '80s, they had no yeah. money to their name. They had something to prove, something to sing about. Yeah. Now, what the fuck are they singing about? Like, yeah. life's, life's good, you know. So, where's it all come from, you know? And so, I guess like for them, I mean, if they didn't give a fuck like they used to, then yeah, you could put out an album, sounds like dog shit, and it's still going to sell thousands of copies because you've just got you've got that loyalty there where people just go, I just got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so crazy, man. Like, and it's so, cause not many, not many people, not many singers or bands when they get older, they make any more good shit. Yeah. Like Tom Waits does all right. Yeah. Every now and then, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go to, I'm not hanging out for a new Tom Waits record. <laughs> Probably Nick Cave sometimes. Yeah, or like yeah. when that comes out, I'll go, yeah. Oh yeah, great. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get this. Right. Mm. But really like what, bands are out there the i mean still this uh, you know but like besides good grunge or good hard rock or heavy metal bands do you listen to and go oh yeah like you still listen to you know and it's a weird one because yeah. i think with bands and probably the difference with comedy is like with comedy obviously mm. unless you're in some sort of comedy like group that you're doing some sort mm. of mm. coordinated thing together or like a show or something you, you're on your own so really you're sort of at your own mercy and your own motivations yeah, yeah. And in a band, like especially when a band starts to get some some traction and a bit of money and things like that. You know, you could have like if you've got four guys in the band, you could have two of them that are still total, you know, grassroots. Yeah. Like just remember like remember the, where they've come from, they've got the same yeah, mindset yeah, yeah. and the other two guys have fucking gone full party mode and yeah. just taken their foot off the pedal. And so you've got to try and balance that ship to make sure it still works. And there's so many bands over the years, the the older they get, because it's not just money. It's like, and I'm sure you've seen it, like people people get married, they have kids, yeah, they man. get mortgages, you know, or whatever it might be, depending on the tier, like, but they start to just get older, you know, and, and life kicks in. So suddenly that, that hunger and that recklessness that made these classic albums classic yes. are just not there anymore. You got to keep the crazy, don't you? You do. Somehow, somehow, Nick Cave, even though he walks to the office at nine in the morning, leaves. He still manages to keep the crazy a little bit. Or, or uh, Radiohead, they still bring out great albums. Yeah. And because uh, I think they can keep the crazy, you That's know, it. they can keep Mike Patton. He's, I think Mike Patton's cool because he's like, I mean he's an asshole but he can always back it up yeah you know like when you see an asshole and they're no good but when you go oh look i'm an asshole with a five octic range and <laughs> this is all the great music that i, I can justify yeah, yeah and yeah. every time i do an album i challenge myself like the new mr bungle where he's just like he's like oh yeah most fucking bands they all get together they play something like that's all mature he goes why don't we just play the old stuff again with Dave Lombardo? Like, it's the best, you know. Like, that's the best, you know. It's fucking so inspiring, incredible. man. Incredible. It's great. It's that's what you that's what you want. You want to fucking go against the grain. That's metal. That's me, that's what's metal. A bit. Okay, or oh, reunion band. Great. Yeah, yeah. Do this. No. Why don't we play do the, the opposite? And, you know. Yeah, that's it. No, I, 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 that's what I love about Meshuggah as well. They always bring out new stuff, and it's always fucking wild. I can't like, believe how big that band got. I mean, yeah, yeah. good musicians, but I think <laughs> yeah, yeah. they must have just been so extreme at the time that no mm. one had ever heard anything like it, and they just mm. rode that wave because mm. just I mean, they're, they're a band that I think, I mean, it's probably not the best comparison, but they're sort of like a modern Metallica in the sense that they've yeah. been able to sort of captivate people. Sound-wise, yeah. don't sound anything like them, but yeah. I think just being able to sort of wow people, I think it's just like a new generation. Oh, 
but then still have like the coolest shit ever, like yeah. the six six nine album. What is it? I don't know. Seven, oh, I don't seven, know. I don't know. The yeah. one with the snakes on the front. It's fucking so amazing how it's got like the biggest heavy metal grooves, like just full on metal. But then also like this robot talks and there's like a 10 minute song and they're just going ding, 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 ding. I'm like, I love all of that shit. It comes together so beautifully like this monster. Like it's all, you hear it yeah. and you go, why would they have this in here? But then you listen to the album as a whole and it all makes sense. It all makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? It's all like, and I think it's that, it goes back not to that giving me- a fuck. It goes back to that metal attitude as well. Yeah. It's like, we're just, we're just doing, we just want to do what we want. Yeah. And... You know, if so- someone hasn't done it before, who cares? Like, you know, let's give it a go. That's what's uh, crazy about, um, this is crazy about, like, Dave Grohl, you know? Like, because I, w- I liked the first Foo Fighters album. I, I loved it when I was a mm. kid, you know? And the second one I was I was on board with, you know? Um, but then I, I grew out of them quite quickly. Like, I, I, I but um i just loved it if he said we just wanted to have fun and play some music or whatever and yeah. I, he did say that a few times but sometimes he would like i think for the one where they got real serious he's like this is gonna this is this is what i want to make like led zeppelin's physical graffiti or something yeah, like yeah. that and i'm like man i was like couldn't wait to listen to it you know <laughs> he's like this is the craziest heaviest shit we've done yeah and it just sounded like the other ones i'm like don't fucking build it up that way brother you know like <laughs> i love you i love dave grohl Probot's one of my favorite yeah. albums ever. And I thought that's what he needs. He can't guide himself. Yeah. He needs someone else to fucking guide him. Then he brings so much creativity. Like when he drums on those Queens of Stone Age albums. Oh, I mean, he's an amazing musician. It's hey, like, insane yeah. drumming. And with teeth, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Actually, Trent Reznor, I don't have any heroes, but, and I don't even listen that much to Nine Inch Nails music, but. That guy still managed to stay crazy, and I don't know how. Like, he is fucking awesome. I mean, he's he's a guy who could have easily just vanished and done nothing. Like, he yeah. could have just... I mean, he, he'd have plenty of money. Um, those albums have been so fucking huge yeah. for that yeah. band, and he's still producing music. I mean, I think he went into soundtracks and fucking film scores and all that sort of stuff, and he just... I mean, obviously, he just needs another challenge. He needs to keep, keep on edge, you know? And well... Just, yeah, my friend, uh, she's a big Nine Inch Nails fan, and I remember when they're the. Oh, you would have remembered this era that the. Well, how old are you, man? Uh, oh, um, thirty six. Thirty six. <laughs> I didn't think about yeah. that. Eighty four. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm thirty eight. So, <laughs> okay. um, I you we were both in the era where they pronounced that rock is dead. Oh, yeah. Kind of round. I remember when Nine Inch Nails came out with uh the fragile yeah. uh smashing pumpkins came out with like um uh god machina or something okay, like that the yeah, one yeah. after melancholy and infinity yep, sadness okay. or uh, the one the one the, the two after that or whatever and people were like oh yeah rock's dead it's all rap now and it, everything and um i remember yeah billy corgan always bitching about it going ah oh, yeah well this album didn't sell well because i can't rap or whatever or something <laughs> like that but then my, um, meanwhile, my friend told me that Trent Reznor was ringing up Dr. Dre, asking oh, really? him like, hey, like, how'd you do this? Or what's this, you know? Not, not conform, like Nine Inch Nails had some hard years there, yeah. like where they probably didn't sell well. Mm. But he was looking for new, th- new ways, looking for new things, not like, not, not, um, not not losing the nine inch nail sound, not conforming, mm. but still seeing what rather than deeming it like as this fucked, it's unfair that Just this has happened. Off and whinge, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like embracing new things and not and but still not going Rob Flynn where he's rapping. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it probably, it probably helped him with his integrity, even mm-hmm. just in the music industry, because people mm. would know. And even if the sound didn't really change that much at that time, just the fact that he's open-minded and he's, he's yeah, he's, that's it. He's collaborating in the sense that he's trying to build skills and understand what's going on. I mean, yeah, that, I think that's. I mean, even for me, like I, I know a handful of Nine Inch Nails songs, mm. um, but 
the reputation that I have of him, which seems to be out there, is that the guy's an absolute mastermind when it comes to music and production and yeah. and doing lots of different things. Yeah. Like Nine Inch Nails is only like a really small part of his entire career. And obviously yeah. that's, that was his big thing that got him famous. But the guy's like an absolute wizard, you know, when it comes to putting songs together and putting music together and he just doesn't stop. Man, he, uh, I, yeah, I don't know, may, maybe a lot of your listeners know this or whatever, but his big idol was Prince. Yeah right. So okay. he went this. He 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 um found Prince's path right. So Prince said what he did was Prince would work in a studio. Yeah. And he'd do anything for the studio. Yeah. He'd fucking clean the toilets. He would do the worst shit ever. Yeah. As because what would happen is he would get free studio time. Yeah. So when people would. Yeah, yeah you know, finished studio, he could go in and make up all of his own music. Mm. And that's what Trent Reznor, exactly what he did. Yeah, right. So he's got that that fucking work hard, you know, for the music style. But it's really cool because I um you watch this social network and that movie wouldn't have been the same without the soundtrack. Yeah. It's basically an action movie. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird, isn't it? Yeah, like the yeah. drama and the tension in the music and then recently i watched the watchman series oh yeah yeah and one of the best probably one of the best series i've watched in the last decade mm. and he does the music for it and it's insane I, I listen to the soundtrack you know probably once a week um and it's incredible you're just like that's this is an example of a guy who stayed crazy i wonder i wonder like you know when it when he boiled down to the dollars and cents yeah obviously nine inch nails gave him the platform that gave mm. him the image that he has but I, I mean, no doubt he's made more money post Nine Inch Nails, like doing all the other stuff than he probably has with Nine Inch Nails. He's probably made a fuck ton of money at Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, yeah, but I reckon yeah. all this other stuff he's done over the years has probably just netted him so much fucking dosh. But I think obviously the fact that he does so many different things just means that he's mm. got, probably not even chasing money. It's just, it's that I want to live on the edge. I want yeah. to continuously push myself. And, and as yeah. you said, like that little bit of crazy where you just, you're constantly in this state of like, probably this stress where you're just trying to like push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. And then if you hit a brick wall then you fucking try and break through it and keep going. Yeah, exactly, man. And I try to do that. Like I, sometimes I forget, like I've, I've been with my partner for three years, you know, and, um, and, uh, I forget that the whole reason she was with me is because I was crazy <laughs> and she's helped me out with my life is yeah. better than it's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. She's changed my life yeah. in a way. She saved my life, yeah. you know, but, you know, um, and but sometimes I forget to be crazy around her. I forget to <laughs> Do you hey become you know, bo she, boring. She just sees my serious side. Yeah, yeah. She sees a side that complains and you know, uh, yeah, complains about things. And I don't. I'm unpredictable. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, no, I've got to be unpredictable. I've got to. <laughs> You know, and that's what I got to do. You know, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I forget to do that. You know, um, so yeah, I've got to keep a little bit crazy, but not affect other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think I was crazy before, but it had too many effects on other people. Like people, you had that fucking giving you their couch for a week, or yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> things like that. You know, but you're. You could have probably stayed somewhere in a backpackers, but you wanted to spend all your money on fucking booze and, yeah. or whatever, or, <laughs> you know, your family helping you out, yeah. things like that. You're like, oh, okay, well, I've got to be crazy, but still be, now I'm reliable, but I've still got to fucking be a bit wild. I've still got, got to you, book this or do this for my, you know, girlfriend. Oh, yeah, this is what we're doing now, you know? Yeah. Just keep her on her toes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what you've got to do. You forget yeah. to be, you forget to be crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. I, um, I don't know if you're the same. I, I assume you probably are just like looking at all the things that you do, but mm. do you find that you're constantly trying to find ways to, to amuse yourself, but they end up being things that they turn into stuff. So yeah. for me, like I always say, if I ever got rich and money was not an issue, all I'd be doing is playing pranks. Like, just, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just trying to find things to spend money on. Like, you know, I've got this running joke with um, Mark, our guitarist. Mm. And so I printed up 6,000 trading cards, which are just all photoshops of him in just these unfortunate positions and, and just like, just dumb stuff. Yeah. He didn't know about it until, cause I do all the orders for the band. So mm -hmm. I put these trading cards in there. So people are getting these orders all over the world, this Lord CDs and going, what the fuck is this? And so they're mm -hmm. taking a photo and then Mark's going, what the fuck is this? And I'm like, oh, just a, just a card. That's it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know there's 6,000 of them. And <laughs> I'll, 
I'll pay that out of my own, po- own pocket because yeah. I've just literally is for my own amusement. Yeah, I just yeah, fucking yeah. love it. And like I'll do dumb t-shirts, I'll do stupid stickers and like just whatever I can just think of that's going to amuse myself. And if somebody else laughs at it, it's like bonus. But for me, I'm so amused at just my own stupid little ideas. Man, that's is what keeps same- you good. That's why you're good. You got to fucking go, you know. I, I, this, it's funny. We're drinking, uh, when this isn't a sponsored post or whatever, <laughs> but we're drinking Bolter beer. And I met, I've, I met the guy, um, who's one of the guys who started Bolter, mm. um, uh, Sterling, best bloke in the world, yep. right? Filmed this ad for him and he took us around the brewery. And, uh, he just started in a shop, a Quicksilver shop, selling Quicksilver clothing. Mm. Somehow worked his way up to, advertising and marketing something like that right and then he um he had a photo of him or something jumping a jumping someone on a scooter like to promote bolter and i'm like what is that to do with bolter and he's like nothing man i just want to see what it's like i thought scooters are funny (laughs) i just wanted to jump a scooter and i was like what do you mean he's like yeah that's what i do i I called this beer they have a beer called handsome elvis i was like what do you call that he goes because I look a bit like Elvis. And he dressed as Elvis in the... <laughs> so he spent like thousands of dollars you know, on this thing just of him dressed as Elvis. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know what? That's... So I went, I went back and Brett Blake and I, we had to do a... We were filming a stand-up special. Yeah, okay. And we were like, he's like, how are we going to promote it? And I said, man, I've always wanted to jump over a fire on a fucking BMX bike. <laughs> so we rigged it up, man. We got these, We got these flames set up we had this bmx jump we had a few friends that had bmx's and we jumped over this fire and i've never felt such an adrenaline rush you know <laughs> like and and the, the footage looked amazing it looked incredible and i was and brett and i rang each other and we we're like that was the fucking best thing ever you know because we're like you forget to have fun yeah especially in comedy there's so many boring people in comedy i like the guys in comedy that are fucking wild you know they're just you meet them and they're wild. You know? I guess it goes back to what we were saying before, where some people are there for a particular purpose to Mm-mm. tick the right boxes, make the Mm-mm. right people happy, Mm-mm. have you know safe jokes or whatever it yeah, might yeah, be yeah. That, that gets you into that radio or the te- television or whatever pathway. Yeah. And I guess because they're sort of so clinical about it, that's probably you don't have that unpredictable element mm-hmm. to them mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they're overthinking everything, whereas you'll have someone who just – just wants to have fun and is amusing themselves and so they're reckless yeah. and you don't know what you're going to expect they're spontaneous yeah and they're the they're the interesting people they're the people like, i think a lot of people gravitate towards because i think i don't know at least from my point of view i i get off on seeing somebody who's just like you can't keep up with them like yeah. i love it i love it because yeah. there's, there's a part of me that's like that and i think yeah. just day-to-day life you, you're trying to suppress it depending on where you are yeah, work exactly, or whatever man. And so every once in a while you, you see somebody who's doing it, it's like, oh, that's right. Like I've got that little bit of fucking animal in me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, that's uh, – yeah, I love, I thrive off that, you yeah. know, because I do forget about it. Like the more you, – the better you get at comedy, the more boring you get. You know, you fucking just – that's what you do, you know? And that's that's what I like about your band, man, is it's like you're like, look, we're all going to have fun. Yeah. You know, we're doing covers and shit. Yeah. But at the same time – Take it a bit seriously, like make sure it's done well. Yeah. yeah. But let's just have some fucking fun, yeah. you know? And a lot of those things can lead to other things. Like people are like, oh, yeah, you're doing covers. Who cares, man? Yeah. <laughs> but then you can – it's all practice. Like the yeah. Beatles did covers in Germany or whatever. I don't think it will happen that you guys will split up and do some weird, crazy side art metal project. But you never know. It's good practice to do that. You're Yoko like, Yoko Ono could rock up very soon. Yeah, 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 yeah man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, fucking, you know, what? A, Andy's buddy, you know, he's gone on to do some other project or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then you go, oh, yeah, but I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for Lord. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't have done that if I if if I was, wasn't was in Lord. You know what I mean? It's but so it, cool. Everything, everything, I mean, every every stupid idea or mm, mm. every crazy thing that you do sort of leads to something else, whether mm. it be just as a result somebody else is attracted to what you do and you make a friendship or something like that out of it and then who knows who knows who knows what else happens down the track so yeah, yeah man it's so cool like it's it's excellent you know like and i love yeah that you're just playing covers and having fun you know what i mean yeah. like you're just like yeah well you know like look because that's that's 
like I was like, look, maybe I'll never make it in comedy. I don't know if it'll be a full time job. So what I've got to focus on is being creative, doing the best stand up I can, mm. but also buy a motorbike and just. I was said to Brett, "Do you just want to ride across the fucking Australia on a motorbike?" Yes. And he's like, "Yeah, let's do it. You know, we'll film it. You know, we'll still make it fun. We're not going to have a whole crew. Yeah, like, we just got GoPros and shit. But yeah. like, that's that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do that. Like Fuck that's yeah. that's yeah. fun. You know what I mean? Like it's and and that'll that could lead to something else rather than me just doing." Just banging my head against the wall, just doing stand up every night, every night, every night. You know, doing the same gigs. Do you find like I mean, I, I saw you the other night, and mm. I, the good thing about it was, um, and not to sort of go into the detail of, of the show, but mm-hmm. like, you know, you got this sort of this PowerPoint thing, and you're running through this story, and mm. it's really captivating, and it's just a different version again of what people traditionally think stand up is, Mm-mm. and you can't put on a big theater performance or anything like that. I mean, mm. it's still you with the mic and you're still telling stories, Yeah. but you had that visual element and there was sort of this narration that sort of went from the beginning to the end. And I just, I see, I, maybe it's just me paying a bit more attention than I used to, but I just see that there's, I think in comedy, people are trying more things probably because you have the internet and you're trying to like, you know, come up with crazy ideas to fucking ride across the country and present the, the com- comedic element in a different way instead of just like sort of getting up and doing like the I've got the mic stand the mic and just telling a couple of jokes you're like trying to make it a little bit more multi-dimensional yeah man yeah that's and i mean look i've always cheated i'm i'm a lazy guy i'm lazy <laughs> but now i've created more work for myself like <laughs> because i originally i always put pictures and stuff in my shows just because it breaks it up like yeah. People, I guess your average person doesn't see too much stand up at the pub, hmm. but they do see me at the pub and they're like, all right, I want to go see an hour of this guy, right? Yeah. Filling an hour is hard. Like, it's fucking hard. So I'll look at, at anything that can keep the audience captivated. Yeah. I don't care. You know, I'll, I'll do as much stand up as I can, but also I'll throw in a picture yeah. just to keep them going. Stand up, some stand ups don't need it. Some, yeah, a lot of stand ups don't, right? But I, I, I try to bring something different to what you see in a club. Mm, You're paying mm. 25 bucks. You might as well see a bit of a spectacle, <laughs> you know, in, in my opinion. Um, but also, yeah, see something that's, like, got yeah, unique jokes, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, because there's so many comedians out there. You know, yeah. Why would you choose me, you know? Well, I think, and, I mean, it's, everyone's got a different personality. I guess that's mm. the same as music. You could say, like, there's a million a million metal bands out there and a lot of them are playing riffs that sound like, I don't know, fucking Pantera or Metallica or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But there'll be something unique about the way that they're playing that will stand out from somebody else and everyone's di- different, so you gravitate towards different personalities. Um, but I think the other thing that was really cool about what I've noticed you do is that, and a lot of other comedians are, are putting a lot of clips and things on like Instagram and on the internet and things yeah. like that, but you've you've been putting a little bit more um and i'm trying to think away a bit more production behind the clips as well so they're like more animated so you, yeah, not yeah. only just your subtitles which everyone's doing these days but you're like inserting like funny sort of uh non-subtitle stuff in there and you've got some actual like animation not animation but some sort of uh um, yeah 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 some extra sort of um visual elements to it instead of just going oh well i'm filming my set and i'm just going to clip it up into yeah. 30 second bits, I'm actually going to put some production into it. Well, I wish I could take credit for that. Well, I can take a tiny bit of credit for it, but um, I've got a really good video guy. His name's yeah. Ed. Yeah. Ed Gooden, if yeah. you ever want to get him. Um, he's the best dude. But also, I just gave him complete creative freedom on it. Oh, right. Okay. So cool. I just said, because I wanted it to be fun for him. I'm yeah. paying him, but also... He's not going to do a good job if I just go, mate, just write down all the words and yeah. shut up, right? <laughs> And I noticed he was like a pretty creative guy. So I was like, all right, just do what you like, mate. Yeah. All right. If you think there's a joke in there, just fucking put it in there. And I sometimes I would tell him the graphics to put in and the way I wanted it. Yeah. But other times he sent me the videos and I'm like, man, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> like you've really. So if anything, one. he's sort of a bit of a, I mean, he's almost like a comedy writer himself because he's taking what you're doing and then putting it through another frame again he's putting another lens over the top to add an extra element of comedy to it yeah that's what i told him i told him i said i i, I just want to focus on the details it doesn't matter because yeah. in comedy that's what's important is like 
well, in anything really, mm. people know the detail. Like if I'm listening to a Meshuggah song, right, you're not going to lie, some of the riffs is just like dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But you're like, why does this sound good? Yeah. And subconsciously you know that fucking 10 guys have worked really hard on that song, that they have been beating their head against the wall yeah. for 10 days to get that right riff. That's why, like, Stanley Kubrick's, and I would never compare any of my stuff to Stanley Kubrick, but that's that's why his movies have lived forever, is because it was those minor details, those minor details that everyone's like, why would you give a fuck about this? Just let Tom Cruise walk through the door. They filmed <laughs> They filmed him walking through a door for two weeks. He's like, it's not right. That's not the right way to walk through the door. No, 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 no. And it's those things that like they become like when if you just watch it on face value or experience mm. whatever these examples are on face value, you don't notice, and yeah. you sort of go, "I really like that, but I don't know why." Yeah, yeah. And so it's that subconscious thing, and it's because yeah. they spent the extra time going into the detail and being like, "It's that bit of crazy, isn't it? It's that bit of crazy where you're just pushing yeah. yourself beyond yes. that'll do or good enough." And it's going, "No, nah, there's something else missing here," and so we'll just keep doing it until that thing appears, and then then we've got it. But for people watching it or listening or experiencing, they might not nece necessarily notice it, but subconsciously they've connected to it. Exactly, man. Yeah. Like that, I, that's why I, you know, I admire what you're doing because how many people would have done what you're doing? Just fucking metal covers. It's been done for years, yep. years and years. However, and you'll get your haters going, oh yeah, fucking old mate did that years ago. Or oh, that my old mate did that years ago, whatever. And you go, yeah, but this guy's putting a lot of extra care into it and making an enjoyable experience. Yeah. He's focusing on the details and making it good for other people. Yeah. You know, like that's that's what's cool. You know, like that, that you know, he's doing the, f the trading card shit and stuff like that. <laughs> it's all fun. Yeah. It's a small thing, but it's part of the whole experience. That's That creates, and also it's a fun thing for you, but subconsciously it creates a little bit of hype as well because people go, oh, man, yeah, this this band's a fucking laugh. You know, like, it's great music, but also, yeah, he fucking put a trading card of, you know, he's made in, you know what I mean? And he's yeah. like, you got to listen to them. They're, they're a bunch of funny blokes, you yeah. know what I mean, or whatever. Yeah, it's that extra and sort of connection, yeah. that, a different type of connection that you sort of, you know, that, it's like anything, you know, yeah. you're, you're watching someone on TV or whatever and you've got a, f a favourite actor or a comedian or whatever it might be and, yeah, you for whatever reason, they've got a they've got a face or the way that they talk or something like that, something that you're familiar with and you don't quite yeah, know what yeah. it is but it's familiar and you like it. And yes. so you become loyal to that that person or, or that thing because yeah. there is that connection there of some sort. So, yeah, for us it's like, you know, we're, we're a bunch of fucking idiots. Like yeah. we're just totally taking the piss out of each other and, and having a laugh. But, you know, at the same time, we'll we'll take the music seriously and, and yeah. do the best that we possibly can so we can back up the bullshit. Yes. Um, and we can get away with the bullshit because we can we can obviously put some music out as well that, well, appears to be half de decent. Man, that's why I love, uh, you know, like Frank Zappa. Like, yeah. he talks so much shit. Yeah. <laughs> Probably one of the funniest guys that ever lived. Like, he could have been a stand-up comedian. Yeah, Easy. Yeah. yeah. Like, how do you get that kind of, those, those comments on society and, and talk with such irony and, and kind of, yeah, that undertone of like, I know how everything works. And I guess it's that, I guess it's that whole thing of just not, not caring as much. So yeah. like we were saying earlier, like just not caring what other people think and just being yourself and whatever that, that is, whether mm. if you, if you're a serious person and that's yourself, people will still like that because it's still genuine. It's still you, or you can be a complete fucking goof and people still like that because that's, that's you. You're not, yeah. Like, people can just sniff bullshit, I think. I think that's probably... Exactly, the man. They yeah. can. It's important in comedy. Mm. It's important in comedy. You know, I, I don't know if you went through this with uh, music or whatever, is that um, that there was a time when I thought maybe things were owed to me or things like that, and also just trying to write jokes that weren't... Uh, didn't pertain to my character. Yeah, yeah. And... That was, that was shit years. They, I wasn't good. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I was getting away with it. Like, people still booked me and all that. But to go, oh, yeah, fuck. I was horrible then. Like, going out there with an agenda. Like, yeah. this is what I'm going to say, you know? Yeah. I think that's probably one of the worst things you can do in comedy is go out there with an agenda because it's going to be, 
you can have all these things to say, but you've got to have a rough plan and you've got to be willing to go off the plan. You and know? I think, I think, and that's where you, you don't have that natural flow or anything because you're thinking about it. And yeah. so yeah. there's this, and it might not be completely obvious, but there's this slight hesitation in your delivery and everything because it's not just natural coming out. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, people, people will pick that up. Even if they yeah. don't quite get it, they're sort of like, ah, eh, don't like, they'll just be like, meh. Like, yes, it's okay. It was all right. It was kind of funny. Yeah. As opposed to somebody who's just like, it's just flowing out of them and it's just completely natural. And someone will like, oh, that's absolutely great. It's fantastic. Just that little nuance that people don't pick up on consciously anyway. Exactly. Years yeah. ago, there was a, I don't, I don't know if you ever saw Shane Matheson. He was one of my favorite comedians mm. ever. He's a Sydney guy. Really good. Yeah, I think so. And uh, he was, yeah, one time we did a gig. I went good. He went all right. But he did so much weird shit, just mucking about, you know. Yeah. And I I went good, but the audience were moderately laughing. They were just laughing. You couldn't say I did a bad set. You couldn't say it was, I'd blown the roof off, but I went good. However, no one wanted to talk to me. There was like 10 people that wanted to talk to Shane. The rest of the other people, they ignored him. Yeah. But there was, you know, five to 10 people that wanted to talk to Shane. So where are you playing next? Because that got him. There's they knew this there. guy wasn't lying. He was doing something different. And it got him, you know. And that's 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 when you know you're getting somewhere as well, when you have shit shows. When you have, you know, a couple of spots where people just don't get you. You go, wow, I'm divisive now. Yeah, right. Like, I'm, okay. you know, I mean, and you can tell. Mm. Some some nights you don't go well and you go, that well, that was totally my fault. Yeah. That yeah. was totally my fault. I'm you know all exactly over the place. Done. Yeah. You know, I'm shit. Uh, or, and then other times you don't go that well and you go, well, I tried my best and I stuck to my guns. They just, I just wasn't for them. And, but those are the nights you'll have two or three people come up and go, hey, man, where are you playing next? Yeah, or, right. hey, man, where do I see you? And you know, you know what I mean? you've done the yeah, right yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 If you don't have, you know, if you don't have uh, friends in the audience, it's so fun to run it into the ground <laughs> if you're not going good and just keep going harder and harder. You know, and probably the more I mean, I've I've seen yeah. some famous comedians do that kind of stuff, but I assume that sort of the more that you tend to go that in that pathway, it's like I'm just going to fucking dig a hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could potentially come out the other side and actually turn it into something really good because it's just so so fucking crazy. Like it's just yeah. I'm just going to absolutely kick the shit out of this set. Yeah, and dig myself a hole and just see if I can come out the other side. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, and it's fucking great. That's where you. Yeah, that's where you connect with people. Yeah. Not many people, but when you connect with them, they're your fans for life then. Oh, I guess that's metal, isn't it? Oh, man. Pretty, pretty metal. Oh, yeah, it's so good, man. <laughs> I love it. I, 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 um, I, I don't know. I remember uh, the first metal CD I got was uh, Pantera Cowboys from Hell. Yeah, right, cool. And just putting it on and just going, oh, wow. But it was accessible a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because I'd, I'd listen to Pearl Jam, whatever. But then I got Sepultura Roots, and I was like, wow, now this is what I thought metal was. You know, like... <laughs> Next I, level. I, I yeah. totally... I wanted it to be totally fucked. Yeah. I wanted yeah. it to be... I wanted it to be wild and not accessible. That'd and be that's crazy. what Roots was, you know. Yeah. But I still listen to bloody... To, uh, to Cowboys from Hell. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that it was s such a fucking great album. And uh, Roots was crazy as well. Also had um, Mike Patton on it in uh, the song Look Away. Yeah, that's right. Far yeah. Out. yeah. It's been yeah. years since I've listened to that. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, a lot of, I mean, because we're similar age, a lot of those albums sort of mid, mid 90s were sort of like those defining, I mean, Cowboys was early 90s, but like, yeah, yeah. I think um, mid 90s was when sort of metal started to really kick back up again. Yes. I think you sort of had the grunge sort of kicked in at the beginning yeah. of the 90s. Um, and then sort of around 94... 94 to like 96 or 97 just before new metal came in yeah you had this sweet spot where you had just a lot of like groove metal sort of stuff really heavy aggressive stuff and then and then new metal sort of came back in came in and sort of yeah, swept yeah. that all away until sort of the 2000s where everything changed again yeah but um yeah a lot of like a lot of us sort of in that era grew up on those kind of bands those albums like even machine head and all that sort of stuff it was there yeah. were the bands that sort of brought I, I think I think a lot of people grew up with like Metallica and things like that. Yeah. But I think those bands were the ones who sort of opened the eyes up and went, "Oh fuck!" Like, wow, this is what this is what metal is. Yeah. Every now and then I listen to 
to new metal sometimes like i'll go back into it and go oh, yeah, i wonder if this was any good and 90 percent of the time it's you can tell us data you yeah you, you're, oh that's a good riff and then you just flick to the next song you're like, oh yeah that's good <laughs> yeah. for the next song but then you had some bands that just didn't really give a fuck that were like really cool and like uh like uh system yeah and yeah. they they were he he like steal this album's one of their best albums and yeah. it's like b-sides and shit you yeah, know yeah like because they they're really just going for it they're not yeah. caring at all you know and the thing is that you know they had that conviction behind what they did like they obviously they were different anyway they were kind of thrown into the new metal thing but they sounded like so yeah. fucking wild yeah so crazy and, and yeah. different to everything else and then even like i mean they haven't put out music for years but mm -hmm. you know all the way along those guys have always had that sort of that craziness that's yeah. just like it's just consistent they haven't yeah. like change genres and like change their yeah. look or anything like that they're just they're just the same guys for the most part and they've they've like i think a lot of their lyrics are political they start off political they're still fucking political yeah. it's just it's like the same sort of vibe all the way through so i think that's probably why they they sort of rose above a lot of the other bands that sort of just got washed away with the yeah fans. yeah i think so yeah man yeah that and i like at the peak of their career they still had real dumb songs as well like yeah. cigaro like yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What do you think of my cock? La, 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 la. You know what I mean? <laughs> Have you seen my cock? You know what I mean? It's great. I know it's got some probably political undertone, but it's, it's a dumb, dumb idiot song. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what they kept on to. You know, well, they you kept, it's probably that um, humor where they can back it up with. Yeah. With yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, I love that shit. I was, I absolutely dug it, you know? And I, that's what I loved about, like, you know, fucking King Diamond and Venom and stuff like that. It's, they did not give a fuck. No, no way. Just no way. absolutely just absurd who music. Cares. Most people fucking hate it. Yeah. But the people who love it just fanatically love it. Yeah. It's just amazing. And they've built a career just from just being. Yeah. Being absolutely ridiculous. Like, just yeah. ridiculous music. But it's, it's, I mean, I fucking love that stuff. It's oh, amazing. Oh, man. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> like, and I was like, yeah, yeah, as I said before. Probot, one of my yeah. favorite albums ever yeah in metal just because like just getting all those guys out and they just rip yeah, like they yeah, just can yeah. sing so great yeah yeah and and just bring like like that uh centuries of sin song yeah you know um it's just like survivor warrior prince you know what i mean <laughs> like you're just like fuck <laughs> and he would have sung that in like 2000 or what 2005 or something like that yeah, i don't know 2000, yeah. something like that yeah when none of that was cool no no none way. of that no. would have been ever been cool no. he's just not waning from yeah. it whatsoever yeah that's what uh, made that album awesome like yeah. just and especially for for Grohl, who was like seen as the Nirvana guy and the Foo Fighters guy and Queens of the Stone Age and all that sort of stuff and just an alternative sort of yeah. person in that in that space to then go out into the public domain to say, I fucking love heavy metal. Yeah. And then not just to say it because potentially it's a cool thing to say, but then to fucking back it up, yeah. start associating himself himself with all these like classic metal musicians and then put an album out just like suddenly his street cred just went through the roof yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah and so like going back to what you said before like with food fighters i think if he turned around i think this is what you're saying before if he turned around at some point after the second album and said we just want to be like acdc yeah, yeah and just put out the same shit every fucking yeah. year whatever we'll change it a little bit but basically we're going to sound the same forever because we just love playing this type, yeah, type of music yeah, yeah, we're yeah, just going to yeah. have fun and that's it then people will be like oh yeah for sure yeah. but yeah it's the claims and the and the the hype or whatever and yeah. send you off on a tangent and you think oh this is what it's going to be and then you listen yeah. to it and you go nuts nah, the same fucking yeah same bog rock oh, i know man <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know it's it's fucking wild isn't it it um anyway i i lo i still love listening i love talking to him i'm, I'm not talking to him but i love listening on podcasts and i actually want to see that thing uh he does he's, he started an instagram account where he just says tales from the road oh really yeah something like ah, that okay. yeah yeah yeah. It yeah yeah it's fucking cool man I, I all of that stuff just music knowledge music you know, facts, everything just interests me so much. Like, Is it with different, just different mus musicians? Is that what he's doing it with or is it with himself? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's just an Instagram thing where he just uploads like little stories, like uh, notes from his phone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then he's doing another documentary or something. I saw like a, it was like comedians in cars getting coffee. Right, type okay, thing, yeah, yeah. Where it was the dude from ACDC interviews him. 
Um, oh, Brian Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I saw something not and too long ago. Driving around in a car or some shit. Yeah, right. And I was like, oh, I don't have an hour to spare, but I would love to watch this. You know, <laughs> that's the type of uh, you know late night after several beers, just yeah. YouTube rabbit hole. Oh man, I love. Um, that's that's the ACDC got it right. Yeah, they were like no ballads. Yeah, just fucking play. But just yeah. no apologies whatsoever. No, like, no apologies. No apologies. Just yep. New album, that's it. That's all yeah. it is. Yeah. Yes. And, and who cares what you think? We're just going to keep doing it, you know? I remember uh, the guy from Excess. he went and sought kind of advice from them after Michael Hutchins died. Mm. And they were like, what did you do for a new singer? And they're like, oh, we just waited a few weeks and we got a new one. Thank <laughs> 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 like, like obviously they missed him and stuff. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. They, 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 it's like yeah, you know, the machine keeps going. Like they, fucking, just, what whatever. else do you do? You yeah, just fucking move on. Don't overthink it. Oh, we need a we need a particular yeah. type of voice. Just fucking get another one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah doesn't matter. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? I love that's that's so like it fits ACDC as well. Like just their whole like no frills, no bullshit. Just fucking get up, play some songs, get off, have a beer, whatever. It's just that whole just nothing prissy about it whatsoever. Man, it was. Horrible, horrible one time I saw I saw Motley Crue um, years ago and they had Motorhead opening for Oh, them. yeah, I saw that tour, yeah. And biggest mistake they could have made. Yeah, yeah. Just like... Motorhead just blew, blew them, them off, off the, the fucking... <laughs> they blew them off the stage. Oh. Did you... I don't know, because did you see Vince Neil ride out on a Harley? Um, I can't... I just remember him sounding like shit and he didn't sing. The, the majority of the set. I can't remember the Harley thing. I remember yeah. well, they were, in Brisbane, he rode out on a Harley and then yeah. it fell over. It was full oh, full really? spinal tap. Oh, man. I can't it was remember. great. Everyone had to pick it up. They're like, yeah. And then Fuck. Tommy did that fucking thing with the drums. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he, I don't know, like, you know, he puts him on a roller coaster and like, because yeah. he can't drum. Yeah. He's just like, <laughs> oh, you know, that's a big statement for me to make. But, you know, it's probably decent, but not, not. <laughs> no, if you got to do shit. Nick Kappa to, calls out Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Says, says the guy can't drum. Fuck you, Tommy. <laughs> no, um, but that's why you do shit like yeah, that, because yeah. you're like, well, I can't. I could focus on drumming or I could just, just make fucking... my drums disappear or I could put them on a roller coaster. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The Motorhead guy did not need to do that. His yeah. drum solo, he did a drum solo in that. And then I saw Tommy's drum solo and it just, he completely dwarfed it because they, they're focusing on the work. They're like, I'm um, They're definitely Motley a theatrics band. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Molly Crew, they're going for a party vibe, yeah. you know. They're not, um, but so are Motorhead. Yep. But Motorhead are like, yeah, we can back it up as well. Like, yeah. we can play, yeah. you know. Well, uh, yeah, Motorhead's just like fucking yeah. drink some beers, drink some whiskey, just play yeah. some loud music and that's yeah. it, you know, so. Yeah. Um, so we should we should uh, wrap it up. Yeah, and sorry, mate. Sorry. No. Do you, um, what's coming up show-wise or oh, man. podcast-wise, fucking. Uh, yeah, I do the Phone Hacks podcast yep. with uh, Mike Goldstein. It's, it's the worst podcast ever. <laughs> Um, if you really want to cringe, if you like pranks, this is the podcast uh, because we go through each other's phones yeah. and find the worst shit on each other's phones as well as a guest, and then we all phone hack each other. Like we <laughs> sent, I had to send a text to my uncle saying I had a dream we sixty nine. <laughs> um, Mike's Jewish, and I got him to send an email to his mum saying. Uh, I want my foreskin back. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucked, it's a very fucked podcast and it's horrible. It's a little bit metal. We don't really give a fuck about yeah. it. We're never, we're never going to be famous. So we just do the worst you do each other to sabotage each yeah. other's careers yeah, and, yeah. and other people's careers. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I also do the Flat Stick podcast with Brett yep. Blake and uh, we just talk about uh, Falcon AUs. Uh, we just talk about motorbikes. We talk about heavy metal, extreme sports. If you want to get into that, it's mostly just fucking idiots talking shit. Talking it's an extremely yeah. unsuccessful podcast, but I love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we're going on a tour. So we, um, we, we're in Dubbo on the, uh, on the 11th of May. Yep. And then we're in um, Tenerfield on the 13th of May. Fuck, all right. There you so, go. yeah, rocking in the commercial in Dubbo. If you fucking heard this podcast, come in, see us, do some comedy. It's going to be great. Yep. And fucking ride with us, you know. Yeah. There you go. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Well, mate, thanks for coming to the uh, Piedmont Palace. You got to meet Larry Burb mate, briefly. Mate, I can't believe it. <laughs> I heard him chirping. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, it's Larry. <laughs> Now you go and reach out to Nick Kappa on the socials at Kappa Flapper on Instagram and Twitter. You can just search for Nick Kappa on Facebook. I'm sure it comes up there. Uh, definitely follow him on Instagram of all places. Like really, really funny stuff. Lots of lots of little videos getting posted all the time. And uh, of course, go to nickkappa.com where you'll find all the show information, some more videos and some other stuff there about uh, Mr. Kappa. But uh, stoked that he came around. I mean, if you're in Dubbo or Tenterfield of all places, I don't know if I've got any listeners in uh, Dubbo or Tenterfield. I might actually... I might actually have a couple in Dubbo, maybe. If you're from either of these places, please let me know. I'd I'd be stoked to know that there's more and more people in regional Australia listening to this podcast. If you're from anywhere, I'm just going off on a tangent here. If you're from anywhere in regional or rural Australia, please reach out to me. I'd love to know. I'd love to do like a a heat map and work out where everybody is uh, from a regional Australia perspective. I'd love to get more and more people out in the sticks listening to the podcast. So, so uh, let me know. Let me know if you're in the middle of buddy nowhere, and uh, and uh, I'd be absolutely stoked to find out. But uh, if you're in Dubbo or Tenterfield, Dubbo on the 11th of May at the Commercial Hotel, you can go and check out Nick Kappa, Brett Blake, and Aiden Jones on the Three Kings of the Road comedic motorcycle tour, and also on the 13th of May at Tenterfield at the Our Place Wine Bar. Our Place Wine Bar. Okay, there you go. It's an interesting name of a... Um, it's their place, I guess. Whoever our is, it's their place. It's their wine bar. Uh, so 13th of May at our place wine bar in Tenterfield, the 11th of May at the Commercial Hotel in Dubbo, and uh, there you go. So very, very funny stuff. Uh, Nick is doing shows all the time, especially on the East Coast. Um, no doubt he'll get over to Perth sometime soon as well, but um, funny, funny guy, and stoked that he came around, stoked that he came to the Piedmont Place, uh, the Piedmont Pad, I should say, and met the Piedmont Prince. I'm just definitely getting this Piedmont branding going on. The Piedmont Prince himself, Larry Burb, and uh, it was just a fun little afternoon over a couple of cheeky beers. So really, really funny stuff, and hopefully get to catch up with uh, Mr. Kappa very, very soon. Before we wrap it up, of course, Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Dowling is the best way to support this podcast. And I'm just leaning over my desk because I always forget my bloody Patreon list. So hang on one tick because I'm not editing this. I'm not editing this. Okay, I've got my piece of paper here. Uh, but it's the best way to support this podcast. And support starts from only a buck a month. And that is my goal for this year is to get as many $1 supporters as possible on to the uh, Patreon page and supporting me. It is the reason why this podcast exists this year. And it's just been because of this amazing community of legends over at Patreon who have been supporting me. So a dollar, dollar a month, you won't even notice it. There are additional tiers if you want access to the uh, Patreon podcast episode that comes out every week or uh, any of the free shit I give away. I give away a bunch of free stuff. Um, I'm getting stuff in the post and a bunch of giveaways and things like that. So I usually give first dibs to the Patreon community first and then go from there and some dumb t-shirts and other funny stuff that I work out and try and do over at Patreon. So patreon.com slash Andy Dowling, the best way to support this podcast. And I can't find my fucking list. Oh, here it is. Of course. So I've got to, I've got to do my little weekly or uh, episodely, episodely, <laughs> that's a word, uh, episodely thanks to my top tier supporters. These guys are in the top two tiers over at Patreon. They are part of the wider community of absolute, just great people, legends who are supporting the podcast. But these people are, man, like they're, they're contributing some serious dollars each month. I'm just talk about fucking accountability, guilt money, or whatever you want to call it. It's just, uh, yeah, uh, um, amazing work that these guys are doing. So thank you so much to Andrew from Perth, Mick G from Sydney, Ash from Daniloquin, Dan from Dapto, Rod from Rayleigh in North Carolina, Patrick from Canberra, Liam from Brisbane, Chris from Sydney, Brendo from Leeton, Tim from Canberra, James from Brisbane, Christian from Canberra, Steve from the Gold Coast, and Andrew from Sydney. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, just backing your boy Andy with his little old podcast. So uh, go and check it all out over at patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. I've uh, got another Australian musician coming next episode. Uh, someone you may not be overly familiar with, unless you're like a, a real local guy in the Brisbane metal scene, or maybe you've uh, had some exposure to some electronic music. I don't know, but um, a little bit different, but a guy that I've known for a fucking long time, an absolute legend, a really nice guy, and I reckon you guys will get a kick out of this episode. So that'll be next episode, and uh, until then, keep passing the fucking episodes around. Go into the back catalogue. There's 291 fucking episodes here over the past five and a half, getting closer to six years, and uh, lots of great guests, as uh, you just heard with Nick Kappa, but lots of comedians, lots of musicians, uh, authors, people, the bloody TV personalities, radio personalities, um fucking who else people that have been working in the sciences in stem uh 
fucking, I don't know, heaps, heaps of different people from all walks of life, or at least I'm trying to get all walks of life on this podcast. So lots of, lots of fun people to come. So until then, folks, take care and ta-ta. Ta-ta.